So I had to take the other things out and take it to the other location. So that was a lot on my body physically. Let me get them in this car because there's some like, you can't even sit in the car anymore. People are just watching, staring. You don't even know what's going on. It's not even a good idea to do that anymore. Um, so what was I saying? See, look at that. Forgetting again. I'm just physically tired and it gets me frustrated basically what I was talking about because it's like my husband should be here like I'm handling so much the kids with school and you know like my oldest daughter right now she's not doing her work like she should be doing with school that's a whole nother situation and I needed to address that um, because my, I had to have my mom talk with the school because I'm at work can't talk and by the time I got home you know I talked with her brief, briefly about it I'm gonna have to sit down with her but I'm so physically tired that I don't even have the energy really to even get into that whole situation like I'm literally tired like I can I just want to go home right now and lay down I had to go to the dollar store um, first I had to get I went and got my basket robins that's my little treat for myself and I went to the dollar store because I needed to get, you know, little toiletries or whatever. And I'm tired. I want to go lay down. I have not had a, a moment just for myself, just to sit and relax. And um, even moment to, you know, spend time with the kids. I've just been, I'm always tired, tired, tired. And it's like, God help me, please. Like, I'm physically tired, like I'm physically tired. I remember, was it Tuesday? Was today Wednesday? I don't know if it was Monday or Tuesday. I'm at my desk and I literally can feel, I can see like my eyes like shut, like real quick. And I just had to jump out of it because it's like, I don't know. I just, I just, God help me. That's all I can say. I don't, I don't, it's so, my husband got it so easy right now. I don't know what he's going through, maybe he doesn't, but it's, this is not, and the words I really want to say, I can't even have them out of my mouth. It's not a curse word, nothing bad like that, but I, I don't, I guess I could say it, it's not a bad word, but I don't feel it's fair. Like, I don't even know if I feel comfortable saying that, but I guess you guys know what I mean. I guess you guys know what I mean. And, um, he has no responsibilities right now, none. He doesn't have to worry about their school. He doesn't have to, he just gets to live. And, and, and you know, if he can't pay his bills, he can get a roommate. He can go shack at somebody's house real quick, lay on their couch, whatever, you know, just to make it. I have children. I have to have an environment, a safe environment at that. They do online school. I got to make sure I have internet. I have to make sure, you know, all these little things. Then the rent went up. I have to worry about that. their school, making sure they're focused on their schoolwork. Um, their grades, making sure their grades are right, which is now an issue. So, I, you know, there's times I want to come home and talk to my husband. Hey, you know take his direction take his direction and listen to what he says I need to do regarding a situation I can't do that and I know I'm depending on the Lord but I'm just trying I'm just venting I guess I'm just venting it's, it's not easy at all it is not easy for me I mean now maybe that's a part of my walk I guess this this is my cross where I'm supposed to be tired and and then I think, no, this can't be it because, and I know when I get home, I'm on my phone, I'm on social media and, you know, I could, I could be in the Bible more than I am. I, I could, I, I do read my scripture, I get a verse or whatever for the day, but I could be in there more than what I am. And then I'm just, I don't know, God, am I supposed to, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say the wrong things, and I'm not thinking right. But it's like I'm, I'm physically, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. Just 
having a bending moment. I guess when I lay down, I'll feel better. I'm assuming. I don't know. I just got a lot. There's just a lot going on. A lot going on. There's a lot going on. like a random cop where I'm, I don't know what he's doing anyways so guys ugh, I'm tired and um I just I guess I said all this just to say it's not easy raising children on your own <laughs> I know I got I got a, it took a long time for me to get to the point but that's the point of um this conversation it, it takes a lot and I'm physically tired and um, I just pray God give me the strength. You know, I even with my job, and I'm so grateful for it. I'm so grateful for my job. It, it takes a lot. There's like even this evening, I got off, I came home, and um, a lot of people are depending upon my job to provide for them and I'm behind on a lot of my accounts because we just get slammed with so many applications and even for me to try and get caught up this evening I found myself working I mean I worked until five but I was yet back on there knowing I wouldn't get paid we did have overtime last week but it wasn't mentioned this week and overtime's only up to eight hours I really can do 50 really because I need the money um, but I had to go in there so I can try and get myself caught up and I really need to go in there again and do it, but I'm tired. And again, here's another night. I didn't have time to just relax and just sit down and get myself together. And I'm going to be in the office tomorrow. Shout out to those who, who have, you know, all the parents who have done this already. You know, I, I see the importance of two parents in the home. I see it. I'm living it. I see it. I see the effect on my children as far as them. They need, especially when I'm going through with the school. And I know my husband would have gotten them back on track with them, making sure they're, you know, doing what they're supposed to do with school. And um, I feel sometimes because it's just mom. My kids see me, you know, they like my old, my oldest, she loves to hang out with me, which I'm totally fine with. I love it too. And you know, they probably so comfortable. It's like mommy's mommy and mommy's my friend too, you know, I don't know. So sometimes I feel like if I'm talking, they're not, you know, it's just like mommy's talking again kind of thing. And um, I don't know. Like, they're not taking the matter of what I'm talking about as serious as they should, especially, like, if I say, okay, make sure you're getting this work done for school, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're getting it done, and they may take it serious at this point, but then I bring it up at another point, and they're not taking it serious to now where it's affecting their grades, and I'm upset, and, you know, that whole thing, and, but I think if it was their father here, I wouldn't have those issues with school. They would be more focused. I wouldn't have to keep talking about, hey, take care of this, do this, clean up, do this over and over. You know, like all those little things that I find myself repeating all the time. And my girls are good, don't get me wrong. I have very good girls compared to these, these teenagers I see out here now. They don't give me any problems like what most teenagers be doing. So I'm grateful for that. But I just wish that my husband had he would understand and, and mm, I don't know, his mind is probably so removed from me like I don't even exist in his thoughts, not even a little bit. And it scares me that maybe, <laughs> hate to say it, um, but I don't know how he feels about his children. And if he cares, what a way to show it. Um, he used to see them Wednesdays was his visitation and as of last year, seeing them on Wednesday has ceased. He doesn't do that anymore. 
He saw them for Father's Day, I guess because it's Father's Day. And he doesn't come on Wednesdays. Today's Wednesday, he didn't come. It's almost like not a thing anymore. And maybe he thinks the girls have grown up and, you know, I don't need to do that anymore. But no, he, I don't know. Because I had moments, I must admit, like it was very draining on me because I used to dread Wednesdays because it was a constant reminder of how he's not around and I have to see him pull up. Well, I, would, I wouldn't look out my window, but I could hear his car so loud. And it was a constant reminder of, yeah, he's here, but he ain't here. It's like, it made me feel sad, lonely, angry, um, that he didn't want me, that he didn't want to come back. He didn't want to come back to us, come back to me that he didn't want to come to this home that we're that me and the kids are in now i felt a little of everything i think as far as that um so wednesdays were very tough that i had to eventually just tune it out like literally I, I had to move myself from the window and just i would do little things just so i wouldn't even hear his car or anything that would make it more comfortable for me to deal with for him being outside um but <sighs> That has stopped, has stopped. So now I'm into another situation of complaint because now it's not, oh gosh, he's, he's coming again, you know. And, the, and it wasn't because he's coming again to get the kids on Wednesday kind of thing. It, you know, it was like, it was a constant reminder of him leaving me every Wednesday. It was a reminder of him, had, him leaving me over and over again because he comes, he gets the kids. He doesn't come in the house. He just, you know, pulls up, the kids go out. That's what he was doing and he'd pull off. It was like a constant leaving over and over again. And I've dealt with that since he left pretty much the end of 2015. So then last year when that stopped, I kind of had a sense of relief. I really did. Because like, yes, I don't have to see him. I don't have to think about him. Um, I don't have to be reminded of my pain every Wednesday. But now I fell into this whole nother realm where I'm like, oh, so you forgot about your kids? You don't care? We don't exist? But I could be honest right now. If I had to choose with the scenarios, um, him coming versus him not coming I would have to say I would prefer this and I know it well for one obviously it's because it's out of sight out of, out of mind right but that's not always the case for me sometimes I don't think about them and a lot of times I do but just where he is in life is not a good environment for my kids um, and I don't want to know what's going on in his life because no matter what it is, it's not according to the Lord. And I don't want that around my kids. And I don't want to be put into knowing about his life because it makes me sad all over again and feel hurt over again that he's rejected me and accepted others or others who knows at this point. So, um, like, yeah, and also, like I said, because the kids, what he do, I don't even want my kids exposed to whatever lifestyle he's in. I know on Wednesdays when he was coming, they were exposed to all kind of stuff that it would make me mad. I didn't want them exposed to. Plus, like I said, his whole life and his moving on, it's almost like he didn't care. They had to just get, go with the flow and just deal with it. Very selfish to me. Um... I don't know I don't know I just I went on a rant about that but I um I am sitting in my car right now in front of my apartment talking to you all <laughs> um I I don't know I, I just hope that God will work everything out according to his will and um I don't know what's going to go on with my husband. I don't know. I pray for him that he'll be saved. The sad part is that as time goes on, I remember from when he left, and I know I'm already, 
I went from feeling tired to now talking about my husband because I kind of drift like that. I can be not talking about him and then here I am talking about him. But um, I just thought about how from when he left, I remember crying almost every day. 2016, I cried almost every day. Um, and then the divorce happened in November and I still didn't feel any better. I felt bad and um, I still wanted my husband <laughs> like what a joke the court system is it really is it's just a joke it's just a money sucking machine it, it just takes people's money that's all I can say because nothing else came and came out of it and it destroys marriages that's it takes your money destroy marriages and, um, I think about 2016 how I was just so wanting my husband back wanting our family back feeling hurt angry probably bitter um, just angry that he didn't want me anymore and felt so rejected and I still had hopes and that he would come back and you know one day he would just come back and he'd be at my door and um, A part of me still wants that, but then I have the other part that's like, I don't know if I, if he was to come back, I don't know if I could take him back. Not that I don't want to, not that at all, but I think we have come so far in the end, the end of times, and only, and only someone who understands where we are right now with the abomination and make it desolate I don't know that I'm just gonna leave that right there only those in Christ would understand what I'm trying to say and I'm gonna just leave it right there um yeah so I I don't know I still love him but the sad thing was that when you're away from someone so long it just does something to you it does something to the heart and um, I know God has made my heart new because I have forgiven my husband um, I guess the feelings I shouldn't maybe it's not the heart I'm talking about the feelings that I have have changed I remember I would get so excited when my husband would come home when we were together and now, if I were to see him, I don't know. I, I'm just speaking too early. I don't even know. I haven't seen him since 2019 face to face. So, I don't know. I could be talking all this mess and him in my presence may make me light up. I don't know. But I just know it just breaks my heart and I feel like a part has just died. That excitement has died. And I'm sure he has absolutely no excitement for me whatsoever because he would be back if he did, right? But um, over time, it just, everything that you had for one another just dies. The feelings, it just dies away. I don't know. I don't know. <sighs> Whatever he had for me is completely dead to the point where I don't even think, I don't think I even cross his mind. Seriously. I think the only time I may cross his mind is when I send him an email asking for child support. That's it. Other than that, I think he's moved on. Um, well, that's why he left, because he moved on. But he's, I feel like, <sighs> I feel like someone who was buried alive. Like, picture someone burying someone alive. Like, I'm dead to him, but I'm not dead. And it's like coming to your grave and putting water on it. And that's the child support. Just water it a little bit and just keep it going. I don't even exist. You would never know. 
that I had a husband and I just I think he treats me worse than a baby mama like I just totally don't exist to him and I bared his children and I'm his wife and I totally don't exist in his mind that I understand why the Bible calls it violence I think that is so violent it's so harsh it's so wicked and evil and selfish worse than an infidel I, I just it is very I, I can't even express there's not enough words I guess to express it it's hurtful that pain that I've experienced I cannot even tell you 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 it was something else. I experienced things when my grandmother died. That was hard. But that, being put away and your husband leaving, oh, that's on a whole nother level. Especially when they leave and they got somebody else and they're treating that other person better. And it's like they both tag team together against you and you don't exist anymore and they totally just shut you down like he like the 12 years or whatever you've been together just never happened like he said like literally days after he left I will be taking the kids to gymnastics you don't have to do it. like it just shut everything down shut you out it's violent leave the house never came back it just, it's just pure violence But it also gave me time. I'm not going to put every, like that whole situation was very hurtful. And, but it also showed me me because I was a part of the issue too. It wasn't all him. How I spoke to my husband during the marriage was awful. And uh, God showed me who I was. And I had to repent. And, it, and when you know who, you, once you're shown who you are, you got to forgive. But I do have those moments where I wish that he was around and, you know, someone to talk to and someone who appreciates you. No matter what life beatings you get down, you got your husband, you got your wife to go home to and I don't have that and I'm not saying that everyone has to have a husband to, you know just to make it in life because we have the Lord and the Lord should come before anybody I'm just saying I'm in, I'm, I'm married to my husband until he dies with one flesh and I can feel that connection even though he's not here with me he is, he's moved on I'm still connected to him I don't feel divorced. I I feel very much attached to him. And again, I can't, I'm talking all this about how I feel, but who knows if he was in front of me, for all I know, I might jump into his arms just to, just to hold him and hug him, you know? I, I, I just hope he prays and turns to the Lord and repents and just get his life together before it's too late. I really do. Things on this earth is just getting so bad and things are expensive and I, I don't know what's going to go on, but I, I have to trust God. I'm going to go in the house because I can go on and on. Thank you guys for listening for this car talk. It started talking about me being tired and now I'm reminiscing about my husband. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> This is how it goes sometimes. I have my moments. I told you guys. Anyway, have a good one. Bye.